Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. What makes a Mercedes-Benz EV different? Electric is what gets you there, but Mercedes is what moves you. The vehicles, all electric, the feeling all Mercedes. Your choice, it's all yours. Learn more at mbusa.com slash EQ. More phone calls coming up. They are the stars of entertainment tonight. Kevin Fraser, Nichelle Turner joining us. They were uh, covering the Oscars, the red carpet, backstage. Great to have them on again, looking gorgeous as always, and Kevin as well. And thank you for joining us. (laughs) Nichelle, let me start with you. The highlight of the night was who or what? Well, Dan, here's the thing. I'm I'm a little like verklempt that the highlight of the night for me was the I'm Just Ken performance by Ryan Gosling. Kudos to the Ken doll that you got there. Because think about it, Dan, the Barbie movie was about the patriarchy and how as women we always have to take the backseat to men and we always want to be liked and we have to twist ourselves into a pretzel to be seen. And we're talking about Ken. This All morning. award season you've been talking about Ken. All <laughs> award season. But it was phenomenal. I mean, the way Ryan leaned into the absurdity of it all was just incredible. I can't imagine how he felt in that moment because that crowd, not easy to entertain that crowd. No, no, no. But you, he, he, you're right. He leaned into the campiness of it. And then you bring Slash out there with his guitar solo. And mm-hmm. I thought it was, I, thought, I, 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 I worried. I thought I was going to cringe and then it was done. And I go, mm-hmm. damn, they pulled it off. What about Incredible. you, Kevin? We've been waiting all award season for that moment, and we've asked Ryan so many times about it, and everybody involved, and everybody has been, it's been mummed the word. But as we saw all the Kens coming down the carpet, we knew something was up. <laughs> and the famous Kens, we were like, okay, here we go. Mark Ronson just came out and told us it's going to be spectacular. Yeah, he said the gig is up, the it, Kens are here, we're about to wreck the stage. Yeah, and Valerie <laughs> Bertinelli was gushing about Wolfgang um, Van Halen, her son, so she just told us everything, too. So I thought that was a great moment. I also love the John Cena moment <laughs> because <laughs> the fact that he leaned into said, being hmm. naked. I mean, I was like, John, are you naked? I mean, he did have on a little something. It was, Nichelle is calling it underwear, but I'm calling well, it's it like a, a banana hammock. Dan. It was that's dead. There was banana. barely nothing there. Yeah, yeah that's what the man there was had on. Nothing it was there. flesh colored, a little bikini, string bikini underneath it. But they had it placed very low. I didn't know what was happening behind <laughs> that envelope. Well, you are a great reporter, so I'm sure. <laughs> Sure, you investigated. Yeah. Look, I was, if I'm being honest, I was trying to get a peep. Okay. (laughs) So was I. So was I. Everybody was. Everybody wanted to know what was going on. The man wore Birkenstocks on the Oscar stage. I mean, how do you, you know? Okay. Now, we discussed was it a little desperate on his part? I felt like if I had a body like that and I had a moment like that and I basically wear a Speedo to work when I wrestle. So right. this wasn't much of a change for him. but The and, man had muscles on muscles. <laughs> if I had a body like that, y'all couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> I'd be walking around here I in, just want to say in this. dental floss and, and high heels. You couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> and, Michelle, here's the funny thing. It is heyday. Dan would have rocked that. If they had said, hey, Dan. Oh, you know Dan would have done it. He would have done it. On a 6 o'clock sports center. On a 6 o'clock sports center. Dan, you're going to do it just to mess with Keith. Just to mess with Keith. No, no. The 11 o'clock, I would have done it. Not the 6 o'clock, Kev. (laughs) The kids were still up at 6 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. 11 (laughs) o'clock. He said the 11 o'clock. He didn't say the late night 2 a.m. sports center. No, no, no. I don't want to. I'd be asleep. never had to do that. Yeah, I'd be asleep. So, wait. What was that? What did you guys think? Do you do you guys believe it was a little desperate? Was it split? Over there okay, the who, who, show today? who thought it was desperate? Seton thought it was desperate. It's a little desperate. Seton little and desperate. Marvin oh, thought Seton. it was a little desperate. <laughs> yeah, he's oh. not comfortable with him. Seton's not comfortable with himself. That's what I'm wondering. Seton, no, no, see, on. I I, I'm, I'm actually more comfortable, comfortable with, with myself. I don't have to walk around naked all the time to oh, say, get all this oh. attention. I'm very secure in okay, myself. Okay, fair enough. Well, John Cena, need, he, he said people can see him. You yeah, know, he like, says you can't see me. Yes, you can. You can see it all tonight. And they saw it all. Absolutely. Is Oppenheimer an all-timer? No. No. I'll be on. I'll come. I'm going to come around. It's a movie about physicists, first of all. Right. And they made a very, very good movie, but it is not one of those movies I feel that will last and hold up with time. I feel that American fiction will get better with time. Mm -hmm. I feel that Barbie will always be a campy, fun movie the kids will discover over and over again. Uh, Those two really stuck out. Okay. Can I tell the, yeah, can I tell the truth? 
the day after this, since we're done pretty much with awards season. It took me two times to get through Oppenheimer. I haven't gotten through yet, Michelle. Okay. It took me twice to get through it. Christopher Nolan knows how to make a movie. So you you appreciate it for what it is, because the man just knows how to make movies, right? Um, But it was a little tough for me to get through. And I had, you know, Poor Things for me was my favorite movie of the year. I thought it was incredible. It was bawdy. It was campy. It had message. Emma Stone was ridiculously good. It was original. Mm. Um, and so it was, I, I'm a little biased because I leaned into that heavily. And we have debated, yes, we have debated about that heavily on our set about that movie. But I, I do think that Christopher Nolan has, knows how to make movies for the critics, that the critics love. Well, but that and man the made voters the Dark Knight. Love. Like, the voters the Knight, love. Right? And that Dark Knight got a lot he of love. He made Memento. Come on. I mean, got a lot of love. You know, yeah, and they're Those great movies. movies. That got love. Yeah, but he made, he made a billion dollars. Like, that's, no, no, that's no, no. different than making something for the critics. That no, is no, true. no. Barbie made a bi- two billion dollars and he wrote off the bat. They were right when they said that Barbie surfed the wave. I mean, that Oppenheimer surfed the wave that Barbie laid down. You have to remember, yeah. they, and everybody, they wanted to get people back well, to the but movie no, but, theater. But Tom Cruise and so they put them that. together. Tom they Cruise put those did that because together. Tom Cruise showed up with the two movie tickets and said, I'm going to see them both in one night. So that was like a Tom Cruise creation to get people back to but the movie. But it became Barbenheimer. Because of Tom Cruise. Well, not that, <laughs> but the, it was also genius marketing by the by the company. Everybody leaned into it. They were like, "Go see both of these. Go back to the movies. We want you back." He's uh, Kevin Frazier. She's Nichelle Turner. Entertainment Tonight co-host. We're having an argument on the day. I Patrick like that. Show. I like that. <laughs> um, American Fiction. Yeah. Loved it. Incredible movie. I watched Loved it in a theater in mm-hmm. New York. I was the only person in there. Yeah, that's a problem. And, that, that's and, 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 I, and I didn't know much about it. I mm-hmm. came out, I've told everybody, even people who don't want to hear, I've just said, it is so sneaky great. And it's not fair yeah. to say it's sneaky. It's just great. And mm-hmm. I, 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 like I came out of that movie and I went, damn, they Same. told a story. They told Dang. a story in Dang. a way. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Yeah, they they did it. He did a wonderful job, and I. Uh, that's the movie that you you're kind of rooting for. It was a you know underdog. His first movie, forty year old kid like guy making his first yeah. movie, and wins an Oscar. And, yeah. Right, and he takes like the perennial great character actor in Jeffrey Wright and makes him a leading man in this movie, and they tell the tale of the American experience that a lot of us have that we just don't see. On screen and Sterling K. Brown in this and movie. Oh my God! It, it was, was great. such a departure. <laughs> and you, and, and you know what? You watched him. He was so emotional at the show. He has been emotional about that role yeah. all awards season long because it is a special role to yeah. him. I and mean, it was such a that. word of mouth movie. When I came out yeah. of it, I'm like, how come nobody told me Sterling K. Brown just stole everything about this Every movie? Scene. No one told me he was that great. He. He was like under the radar through a lot of the award season, and then all of a sudden it was like, boom, here's an, an Academy Award nomination for you. And Jeffrey Wright was wonderful as well. Uh, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Who got snubbed last night? Biggest snub was who or what? Okay. Well, Lily, Glad, Lily Gladstone. I thought it was yeah, a we'll moment. Yeah, we'll fight about this. It was a moment to fix what happened at the Academy Awards back when Sasheen a Little Feather was snubbed for um, grabbing Marlon Brando's or not accepting Marlon Brando's Best Actor Award. Yeah. And here you have a great story, an important story, and an important moment. And I thought that Lily Gladstone should have won. And um, you loved Emma Stone in that role. I thought Emma I Stone loved was Lily the best Gladstone. performance of the season in any movie. And, and this is why art is subjective. Uh, yes, Killers of the Flower Moon is an important movie that needed to be told and was told very well. They did an amazing job in that, and we need to still tell the story of the indigenous people and what yes. they went through in this country. I just don't... Uh, either way, I thought it would have been great. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I didn't... You know, so I don't think it was a snub. I don't think it was an upset. I think it was just a pick. And they were both incredible performances. Lily Gladstone was the heart and soul of that movie. Yeah. But Emma Stone... 
Like she created, she took a blank canvas and created something we had never seen. Okay, but how can you say that and then we look at Greta Gerwig standing in the front row, not even getting nominated, she didn't create and she created an incredible well, world Barbie. for Barbie, an incredible Barbie world. Yes, but but the the prototype was there, and if you are a little girl who grew up in the Barbie world and also who grew up in this country, that story is has been told. She magnified it and brought us the story of the patriarchy, but it wasn't a look new. How we're still talking about Ken. Look how we're still talking about Ken. Well, but that's what and, the movie and, and was about. And the Frankenstein story is not new. It's just a twist. But on that the wasn't the Frankenstein it was story. Basically, it was not the. Frankenstein See, this is what I want to tune again. into <laughs> on entertainment tonight, like ET after hours. <laughs> where you're really being honest instead this of... This is what you get from us for real. No, okay? but, On a daily basis. And, yeah, and our sports takes are even better. I was going to say, especially <laughs> when we're talking about sports. We talk about sports? Ooh. Dan, this is the best time of the year coming up. March Madness. Come on. Mark, Wait, come on is now. this better than in the fall? So yes. if I gave you Wait. September... Let's say I gave you October or okay. I gave Ooh, you March, okay. April. I'll give you March, March April. April. Baseball March. was my first love, so that's tough, but... I grew up loving college sports so much, and especially college basketball. I grew up, you know, in a in a college town, and so for me, for this, this is my time of year. Okay. Jan, to, ex Jan, to explain how much she loves college sports, she's a season ticket holder at Mizzou for, for football, basketball and, and basketball for ba and volleyball and, and baseball. Now. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> she's deep in it. I mean, especially the way they're handling things in the SEC right now. It ain't pretty. Yeah. But anyway, I do want to say March Madness trumps everything because this year, especially mm -hmm. there is so much parity in college basketball. Anybody can come from anywhere. You look at like USC beating Arizona yeah. in the Pac-12 in the Pac-10 tournament, which I mean, and bye bye Pac-10. And the women's game is and so ridiculously great basketball. right now. Oh my God. Come on. Shout out to my guy Vic Schaefer and what he is doing at Texas, losing his best player, and they are still rolling <laughs> through the Big 12. Shout out to them. Caitlin Clark, the LSU South Carolina game. Just, I mean, the women's game is incredible right now. It is. It's it's better than the men's game in college. It basketball is. Right it now is. For but me. but they stay. So we're familiar with these yeah. players as yeah, the men point. Point. one and done. Okay. Good point. Thanks for joining us. I'm not sure what we <laughs> solved here. But we got to Nothing. spend we got to spend time together, and one of these. Dan, which one did you like better, Lily Gladstone or Emma Stone? Lily, I I was shocked that she did not win, and I think she was shocked that she didn't win as well. She did, and we did see um, behind the scenes Martin Scorsese go up to her and uh, console her after you know the announcement mm -hmm. because she she was. I mean, of of course you're going to be heartbroken and dejected. They had watch parties in her hometown yeah. for her. I mean, of course it's going to happen. I, I just I, I'm being I'm be, being moment. yelled at. I'm being yelled at. Oh, sorry. By somebody on your end that oh. I have to go. I well, it's just a, well, it's, you know these what? guys, we're on Dan's show. Kevin Frazier is the boss over we're on, here. We're on Dan's show, All I guys. know is we're on the Dan Patrick show. Come on this now. This is the patriarchy. What? The yeah. men Dan, the Dan, we're about to play here. the music like a speech that goes on too long. <laughs> oh, that kind of music. Oh, yeah. yeah, like you're going too long with your speech there. Exactly. It, uh, yeah, Dan, but we will. I am mourning this morning the law, Lily Gladstone's loss. I Understood. I, I get it. And that's it. Bob well, Michelle. say goodnight. Oh, <laughs> and and one of these days, Kevin, I'm yes. going to be on entertainment tonight with Nichelle for one show. Okay. Come All on. All right. Please. While tomorrow? I come and I come and do the you do the show. You do the show, and I'm going to be on entertainment How tonight. How about you come and do the show with Kevin, and I come do your show? Well, oh wow! Heck yeah, that's kind of oh wow! That, that's, heck yeah, that's awkward. I'd I'd love for you to do it, but I would prefer to co-host with you, Nichelle. <laughs> Dan, you co-hosted with men all I know, your life. I know. What's the problem? Okay? I know. <laughs> Don't disrespect Keith and <laughs> Stu and Rich and he me. And all right, we gotta go, and that is it. And we say goodbye, Nichelle and Kevin. Thank you. I I gotta. I, I have to. Think. They're still talking. <laughs> yeah. They're still talking. They were telling, see you guys. They were giving us a rap, you know, like, come on, tell them, tell them to shut up. I go, okay, tell them to shut up. Kevin Frazier, Michelle Turner. Whew. Yeah.